So, what is architecture? Okay, I'll start. Um, to us, architecture, well, first of all, we don't know. I don't think we know. But the way we see it and the way we try to, to get to do architecture is to provide a canvas for life. So this is a bit how we see it, as a support, I think, and much less as a, as, as a as design of objects. Yeah. Uh, th there is one other difficulty to define architecture, that is that it is rapidly changing the last few decades. Uh, the, the global society is more and more aware of the fact that our planet is at the end of its resources. And um, using space, designing space, uh, or trying to do that on a planet that is overpopulated and then became too small, is a totally new profession. And we are like surgeons operating on a surface that is heavily suffering, very ill. And, and maybe architecture for decades, for centuries, was almost like a kind of a guilty accomplice in the destruction of the surface of the earth. And we could flip that around and it's opposite now that architecture could, could be the, the spearhead of an ecological future if architects would change and not serve um, mankind, but serve the complete environment and, and focus. Because the, the mother of all ecological problems is excessive land use. And that's exactly where architects are active. The most ecological building is the one you don't build. So if we would focus on a totally different approach, like reducing our land use in from being the most guilty profession on the planet, it could become the most ecological one. But the question is if architects, if it's our role to do that, uh, we uh, wonder sometimes. I think there is a lot of political will that's needed to, yes. to achieve all that. So in that sense, we are a little bit frustrated. Um, yeah. I would say that in our office, we often talk about urban design. We are architects. We are trained as architects. We do build. We also do many studies, but we talk about architecture as urban design on a smaller scale. This is how we, how we see it. In a way, and that's very complementary to the question that I raised, like, like is, is it still about space, form, function, light? Uh, it, 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 it starts to sound a bit like playing music on the Titanic while it's going down. So shouldn't we try to be aware of what's happening all around us? Okay, so what can architecture do? Well, as I said, <laughs> I go back to the to the first to my first answer. I, I, I think it can uh, facilitate. Uh, this is how I see it, in its role as a support. Yes, it it is enabling, and maybe if architecture stops being practiced from an anthropocentric point of view, like it only should serve the the needs or even the whim the whimsical follies of mankind. Uh, but it should be a kind of responsible actor in, 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 the, in the world. Then it could also maybe add, but it shouldn't play God, but it has the potential to transform step-by-step -step society and have an impact on how much resources people think they need to lead a meaningful life. So I have to agree with the fact that it is a lot more about urban design and that architecture can change a neighborhood can change, if only a little bit, uh, a society or the behavior of people in public space or in a city and the way they, they interact. So it is a lot more related to the group, to the society than to the individual, I think. Yeah, we could say that uh, the space between buildings or, or what we don't build, let's say, yes is, is uh, much more important to us and the programmatic infill and we try to have an impact there but it is difficult yeah, yeah that that is complementary with with our idea that it, it is a process it is not an object it's a building it's not architects have the tendency to solve problems with buildings and in fact what you what you leave unbuilt or what is between the buildings has a lot more impact on uh, and you feel this when you travel as a tourist or deciding not to build, yes. but uh, yeah, again, it's not. Uh, we are rather weak, I would say. I don't think we have much, uh, much to say. Uh, That's the frustrating part of our profession: that that the diagnosis that we 
that we more and more see as an inevitable conclusion in every process that we are confronted with is painful and the control that we have over it is, re is reducing rapidly. So maybe we should go more subversive and more fundamentally deep into the matter. But I don't think we should have control. It sounds no. again as a the no, architect. No, uh, an impact <laughs> is more like an impact is maybe. Well, I think architects have the capacity to think in a transversal way and also have a lateral view on things. Yes. I think that uh, that is the main advantage. This is why I would involve an architect uh, in, in whatever process. Yes. You see, I, I think there's the expertise that that we that we bring uh, to the table. Many many politicians are not aware that national budgets are destroyed by bad urban design, that traffic issues, mobility problems, uh, traffic jams are created by bad uh, allocation of land use. And not by, uh, and they will not be solved by buying a better metro system. The, um, we believe very much in city life and recently we read an article, um, in an article a remark of someone, a citizen, who said that he doesn't want to come to live to Brussels because there is no poetry in the city. And then you off immediately hear the reaction, yes, in Brussels there are so many ugly buildings. And we think that that's not a problem, um, that, that, that you don't make poetry in a city with buildings, that that's not the, 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 the right answer. And that's very difficult to, to explain. I think you can, and I think we should. I think there should be poetry in the city, but you don't make it with beautiful buildings. That doesn't, that's not enough. Indeed, and, and another way to look at, at that problem is that uh, it's not about the buildings, but about the program and the proximity of program. City life is fun if nearby many different people and many different functions interact with each other. And that's a lot more important than maybe the tectonics of the facade or the beautiful light on a beautiful object and all these things. Maybe those things are also a little bit important, but I think they are way overestimated for decades and decades. So what is your architectural position? How would you position yourself within the discourse? Well, I think we are still searching. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, in the first place, I think we position ourselves as a team. And we try to do that on different levels. Um, within our office, uh, very much so. Uh, but also when we work on projects, which sometimes comes across as not really um, being in control of things or not no. not knowing what you want. Uh, people are used with architects who come with a brilliant idea and, uh, and it's that or nothing and uh, yeah. Um, so I think teamwork is very important to us. Um, so this collaborative approach. Um, and then next to that, I think we shouldn't forget <laughs> that in our case, for instance, we have a, an office together, which is a company. We also have to run it, and architects don't talk about it. And it takes a big part of your energy. And the most difficult, I find, the, to, to find the... If you don't want to compromise, um, you, you have to find the balance between running the business, doing your, what, you, what, what we actually like, you know? I mean, in, uh, creating the support for, for, for city life. And the most important, activism, because this is what we are trying yes. to do. And I think combining activism with running a business, that you have to pay bills at the end of the month, uh, you, it, it's very it's an interesting pra paradox. pragmatic, <laughs> but we should not hide it, because it's part of our lives, I think. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting paradox, this, this, uh, this idea that, that you try to, to make money with something that is also beyond the rational. That is, uh, and our position there is a critical one, I think, that we, we really question our assignment, every assignment, uh, that we, we, um, we try to step out of the, the, the minimal definition of what an architect should do. And it means also that our position is fighting for a combination of getting more respect and accepting also more responsibility and more awareness of what you're doing. In that sense, it is, it is strange that many architects are willing to to participate in competitions that are not paid. Because, as one I just said, it is a business. And the core of our business is to provide good ideas, concepts. That's the gold of the whole process. That's what you, in, in an industry, would, you, would, you would put a copyright on it. This is the main thing that makes money. And this is the one they ask you to do for free. I mean, it's, it's, it's absurd almost. It's as if the essence of our profession is 
making waterproof roofs and, and, and plugging in electricity and having a sustainable thick layer of insulation. And I think those things are maybe part of what you should do, but they are really not the essence. I would like to add the fact that uh, two days ago we were in the car coming back from uh, the Netherlands where we presented the project and we decided to also try to bring a little bit of joy in what we do. <laughs> So we should also try to position ourselves uh, as, a, as an office that uh, enjoys what they are doing. Because if you hear of all, everything that Leo just explained and this responsibility and everything we want to achieve, um, I think it's getting very serious and very, um, I don't know, it can bring us down. So that's something, I don't know how we are going to do it, but we said let's have a bit of fun as well. Let's, let's, maybe fun is not the right word, but let's have joy, yeah? let's, let's bring joy in what we are doing. Because... I, I, I agree completely. I mean, you often say it also, when we talk about processes, about buildings, or about all the difficulties that we are confronted with. If it's not fun, it's not going to work. And uh, we are often confronted with the fact that architecture is more and more slowed down by complexity, administration, political, and maybe also electoral fear of politicians. They don't have the courage to, to take decisions that are really necessary and then yeah in order not to get sad maybe we, we try we really try to to spice up or or maybe the the creativity makes it still worthwhile that you you feel that the profession can contribute in a meaningful way to solve issues that that people are confronted with so what is your design method I think our design method is very much linked to the context in which we operate. So, we are an office in Brussels. Um, we've been active abroad, but mainly doing studies, so we haven't built abroad. Um, and I don't know if you know, but in, in, in Belgium, architects do basically everything from the beginning until the end. So, and we are supposed to know everything. Uh, so, we also uh, follow construction sites, uh, uh, we know about uh, uh, prices, we, we um, put, up, put together tenders, uh, tender files and, and so on. Um, and I think we use, and then on top of everything you have an extremely complex uh, political structure. So we have regions, uh, uh, Brussels, Flanders, uh, Wallonie, uh, federal level, uh, local level, Brussels has 19 different communes, so it's, it's extremely complex. Um, so I think what we always do is, in the beginning, gather as much information as possible, um, not only from outside the office, but also from within the team. So experience that we have built in the past, and, and then just play a lot between different scales. So we always zoom out a lot, then zoom in, and, and constantly uh, play between this, uh, mm -hmm. these two scales. And, and I agree, and our, our design method is also linked at to the, the themes we mentioned in the, in the first questions, um, we try to make a difference, to, to have solutions that are meaningful, that make sense and that take in account the context and, and the, glo the local and the global context. Uh, it's often said, uh, think global, act local, and that saying probably applies most of all to architecture. And there is another aspect maybe that colors our work, that's the idea and I think we wrote it once in, in one of the versions of our mission statement, that architecture is a hybrid between, between human sciences, the culture, art, and uh, rational sciences, physics, engineering, building uh, technology, and so on. As it, often it looks as if architects are supposed to, to write affordable waterproof poems. And um, in order to do that, we try to really reach with our head into the clouds, and at the same time keep our feet on the ground, so to really understand economical logics, affordability, uh, reducing building costs, all these things. And probably those approaches also make that one will never recognize our buildings. We don't have a kind of ideology or a constantly recurrent style or material or shape or forms. The only thing that comes back is, is a kind of an attitude, an approach.